goes against our nature. It goes against my nature as an American. I'm, I'm like, hey, don't tell me I got to be silent. I'm going to speak up. I'm going to, I'm going to resist. I'm going to say my. But the Bible says there are times when it's so evil that the wise are quiet. And I think we're in that time yes. right now. That, I mean, last week that the. the the college professor in North Carolina, Mr. Parker, who was being vilified because he was expressing his views. He was fired. He won the settlement. And then um, we're, we're being told that he, he committed suicide after he won the, the financial settlement. Why would you commit suicide after you won a settlement? UNCW professor accused of racist tweets was found dead inside of his home. Mike Adams left the university in June. 57,000 people signed an online petition calling for his job after those tweets came out. While Adams was already set to retire next month, deputies in New Hanover County found his body when they went to check on him. The cause of death is unknown at this point. Now, somebody killed the man. Right. Somebody murdered him. See, he was a Christian man. He thought he had the right to speak out. Because he, he was, in his mind, he was living in the old America. In the old America, he had rights. In the old America, law and order prevailed. But we're not in the old America anymore. And lawlessness is prevailing. And the times are evil. Hey folks, this is James Tracy, memoryholeblog.org. And I wanted to say a few things concerning the uh, very untimely passing of Professor Mike Adams, who was a uh, professor of sociology and criminology at the University of North Carolina, Wilmington. And uh, he was also a, a public figure, a public uh, intellectual, uh, because he wrote... Um, for a number of conservative uh, websites and um, was very successful in that regard and also had a, a professorship. So he had a great deal of notoriety and he was increasingly becoming kind of a lightning rod uh, for controversy given the shift in our national politics over the last several years. Uh, and I share, I admit I share a certain degree of affinity with Professor Adams as well, because I had a similar conversion um, during my time in academe that led to my expulsion, ultimately. And uh, I, like him, am uh, now in federal court. He uh, had to take the University of North Carolina to court because he was denied a promotion from associate professor to full professor. He already had tenure, but uh, this would have involved... Um, uh, full professor position and uh, increased salary and so forth. And so he ultimately was successful in that struggle. It took seven years, but um, ultimately uh, things weighed in his favor. And most recently, he negotiated a severance with uh, the University of North Carolina at Wilmington to the tune of um, $500,000, I believe $504,000 because he had received such a degree of notoriety uh, that they wanted to nego negotiate um, some sort of a separation. And they could have done that, or they could have terminated him uh, and um, faced another, uh, another long legal struggle. So uh, this was just negotiated uh, this past spring, the severance. And um, this was something that he, in part, opted for, uh, an early retirement. Uh, he's only about. He's only in his mid fifties, and so uh, this this was a um, a negotiation uh, whereby they would they would part ways the university and uh, and him. So he has this that he has negotiated. He also um, is a public figure in terms of free speech issues on college campuses and uh, is a notable speaker and very articulate uh, as well. Uh, he is a um, sort of enmeshed in the conservative or right-wing um, um, 
glitterati, if you will. And um, so he's, he's a notable, uh, notable figure in that regard. So uh, in addition, uh, he has a faith life. Uh, he is a, a Christian. And um, so it's just very unusual, very odd uh, that someone who appears to have everything going for him uh, and is walking away from this, um, this professorship on his own terms, at least partly, uh, would do something like this, would take such drastic measures, would be um, enveloped in such a great deal of despair uh, that he would uh, take his own life, particularly without uh, visiting his pastor or his priest or whatever denomination, um, Christian denomination he may have, uh, may have belonged to, and consulting uh, with them. This was just very abrupt. And in my view, really very unusual. And I think it uh, should give us some cause for concern that an individual who has um, political views and spiritual views that are diametrically opposed to 90, 85, 90% of um, the professoriate and um, people involved in higher education, most of whom are liberal or left wing, there are a lot of things uh, that I believe are unanswered here, a lot of suspicious things. I had an experience that I wanted to relate and um, that was immediately kind of peaked in my mind uh, when I came across the story of his passing. And back in 2013, I, um, I had elicited a great deal of controversy because I wrote on my personal blog uh, on a number of posts that um, I thought that the media reportage of the Sandy Hook um, school massacre was unusual. A lot of it did not add up. And I um, expressed similar reservations concerning the Boston Marathon bombing a number of months later. In early January of 2013, I recall that I was uh, on campus and I was returning to my office uh, one evening after teaching a night class, uh, which I typically did. And my phone was ringing. Now, it was kind of ringing off the hook anyway because of the controversy concerning these, uh, these blog posts. This was, once again, around the first week of, of January. And so I answered uh, the phone, and it was a person I would never did not know and uh, had never heard of before. Uh, but he introduced himself. He was a man, I would say, probably in his 60s or 70s and um, had a, you know, a southern uh, accent. I believe he said that he was from Texas. And he wanted to talk and engage in conversation as if, kind of as if, as if we were um, long lost friends uh, in a way. In other words, he wanted to create kind of a rapport with me that was, that was friendly. And he discussed uh, himself, uh, who he was, uh, the kind of people that he knew. He wanted to let me know that he knew fairly uh, influential people or had worked with them in the past. And we went on, this conversation went on, it was largely one-sided because I was primarily listening, but it went on for about 20 minutes or so. And he said, uh, at one point, uh, he said, you, you need, given your, your stances, you need to be very careful. Um, you know, you need to be careful and kind of look over your shoulder and... Uh, be wary if there are any police that pull you over or anything along those lines. He said, uh, and I'll tell you, I, um, I myself, I, I know some of these people who are hitmen who carry out these sorts of things. And they're very well built. Uh, they've got arms like fire hydrants. And their favorite tactic, their preferred tactics, is shooting someone with their own gun. Uh, that way they can generally arrange a scene whereby it looks as if it was a suicide. And I've never forgotten that. And of course, a few days later, lo and behold, CNN appears at my college campus, at my office, uh, quizzing the personnel there. I was not there. And then coming to, um, to actually film out in front, of my, uh, in front of my home, asking me to come out and, and do an interview. There's a lot of pressure uh, at, uh, at that time. Now, I don't know, and I guess no one actually knows, except for perhaps uh, close family members, what Professor Adams went through uh, in the last, um, last several weeks of his life, uh, whether he may have been gang stalked, whether he may have been harassed, whether he received threats. There were reports in the press that his behavior was erratic, 
I believe he may have lived alone. I'm not certain about that. Uh, but he was a very quiet individual, according to his neighbors. So um, all of these things are cause for concern, in my view. And uh, as well, they also suggest the political climate that we live in, as I was saying. Um, how free are we? It doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter what your political views or perspectives are. How free are we to actually engage in dialogue and discussion? I believe that um, Professor Adams was not desired at his university or in higher education generally because he had a view that was opposed to, once again, the large majority of his colleagues not only in sociology or criminology, but in the humanities and social sciences generally. And they didn't have a very good response for him um, in terms of actually engaging in a sincere discussion. Uh, and uh, that's largely why uh, he was persona non grata, uh, why he was in many ways uh, disowned. So just some observations concerning uh, Professor Adams. And uh, may he rest in peace. It's a terribly tragic, uh, tragic situation. This is James Tracy, MemoryHoleBlog.org, and take care. God bless. See you soon.